Welcome. To Arcade Audio. Welcome to Dilettante Ball. I'm Johnny. I'm Spencer. Here on Dilettante Ball, we go on Wikipedia. We click random article. And we talk about it. Yeah, we do. Uh, it feels good to be back in back in the studio. Yeah, we've been on the road for like three weeks now. Ugh, it is a long way to Kansas City. Mm. Imagine if we just like were, we had just been on the road that whole time. God, that'd be, what would we, like we were bicycling the whole time or something? Just, just doing shit, you know, just doing the circuit. Yeah. <laughs> And all the nightclubs up doing our, our twenty minute podcast. Hey, can we do some, can we do some time? <laughs> oh, that'd be podcast open mics is I think the worst thing that could exist. <laughs> it maybe that could have been a thing like in the like the fifties or something. Like sure, if it was like broadcasting on like sh- on radio or something. Yeah, like I don't know. Yeah, yeah, like imagine a world where like yeah, there weren't like the Borscht Belt comedians or like all that shit, like that didn't happen, but it was all like radio performers or something. That'd be weird. Yeah, probably not possible mm-hmm. though, I guess, cuz there probably wasn't like a national radio like system in place. I mean, it's not now. Yeah. You know, it'll be so local. Would there be a market for that? Would people tune in like they they would know like, oh, eight o'clock on Thursdays and Fridays, like it's the you know random variety hour, and who knows what's going on. Well, happen. I mean, there were like radio dramas and stuff that mm-hmm. people that must have been like sort of picked up, right? You know, like I don't know. I have no idea how the radio worked. Like, what what made the stand up comedy boom um, happen or be a thing? You know what I mean? Like, was it television or when when did that happen? Like the seventies or eighties? Like eighties, yeah. So was that just like everyone had a TV and that's why? So like radio was never like radio could never have been a real. You know but I mean? how did everyone see stand-ups? What, like, what did that? Did everyone just get like a thirty-minute HBO? What was it? Everyone. Did. What was the HBO? Their like stand-up show. I don't know. H, H, when HBO presents. Maybe, maybe that's all it was. Yeah. I remember I I was very into HBO presents like stand-up specials. Yeah. No, I watched co- tons of Comedy Central, but that was well after the fact. You know. Yeah. Yeah. That was you know Carlos Mencia, um, yeah, Dane Cook, definitely. Um, the was, the guy who does the the impressions, the movie guy, he does like the oh, little tortilla boy, yeah, Pablo Francisco. Yep, yeah. Yep. <laughs> he, I think I've mentioned this on the show before, but he was just on like the local news here maybe a year or two ago, and yeah. it's like Pablo Still Francisco's, doing... you know, performing at Chuckles over in in uh, <laughs> right. you know whatever Oak Park, doing the exact same impressions from 1997. Yeah, it was wild. Yeah, it was wild. It's weird that he wouldn't like update it. I mean, like, I guess you don't need to until you have to. You know? Straight up, like, yeah. If people are still coming. Who cares? If he can, yes, exactly. If he can still tour on the same, it's the same reason Carrot Top just like. Well, Carrot Top's funny. <laughs> I think he is though. <laughs> I think he is too. I don't know, dude. <laughs> like, I want so badly to go to Las Vegas and just like, like know for a fact. What if? What if Carrot Top just like? Cause I I don't give a shit if he's like you know what I mean like I don't care how he gets his laughs is he's getting laughs exactly if you, it's if it's like hacky like, as fuck yeah. but it's. If yeah, it's funny. Like, like, why are people so precious about that? I I don't know. I don't know. I feel like that attitude is maybe changing a little bit. Maybe like not about him specifically, but like, hey, can we just like enjoy the things we enjoy? Sort of like with the advent of like nerd culture kind of coming into the mainstream, maybe helping a little bit. Yeah, but it's. I think it's it's half that and half worse. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like a true coin flip. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I think it's. I it just. I mean, his work ethic, man. You got to appreciate that. He fucking hustles. Yeah, he hustles. Gosh, he's fucking Jack too, man. Yeah. How does he find the time to be funny and work out? And do all these 10, 10, 2, 20 commercials. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he used to be so skinny, remember? Yeah. He was in like a movie with maybe like the Olsen twins. He, well, he was certainly in chairman of the board. That was the Carrot Top movie. Okay. Uh, was he a bad guy in it? I think he was the guy. He was the, it was like, it was something like his dad or something was the CEO of a company and then like died all of a sudden. Okay. And then he. So was his wacky kid is the, mm-hmm. God, I love this plot so yeah. much. Okay. So it's sort of like in the, it's not this, but sort of like a Billy Madison-esque like. Sure. Yeah. Like goofy son of the like straight lace father. Yeah. Um, no, but the one I'm thinking about, he was like, I don't know, a bad guy. And maybe he worked at like a state fair or something. Dude, I don't remember at all. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't even know if the Olsen twins are in it. <laughs> I don't know. And maybe he was like a partner with a witch. I might okay, be... the, the Olsen twins were definitely in a movie called Double Double Toil and Trouble. Yeah. Where there was like a witch and. And her familiar carrot top. <laughs> <laughs> Was that was that it? Am I remembering that correctly? I think so. Yeah. Okay. 
You want to get an article? Uh, yeah, sure. I don't yeah. have any more material on Carrot Top. Whoa. Uh, Amika Ogbo, okay. born 1977, is a Nigerian sound and installation artist. Okay, sounds cool. Best known for his soundscapes of life in Lagos. Trained as an artist, he began working with sounds that characterize cities following an Egyptian multimedia art program. <laughs> he presents unmodified field recordings from Lagos City Life. For instance, it's Danfo Share Taxi System. In gallery, in, uh, in gallery installations with headphones and speakers, his non-audio work uses iconography from Lago City Life. He participated in the DAD, D-A-A-D, <laughs> uh, Artists in Berlin Dad. program. And, <laughs> Daddy. My daddy. And in 2015, <laughs> Venice uh, Biennale and received the 2016 Bremen uh, Bocherstrasse Art Award. I know. But, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, his his work has exhibited at the Brooklyn Museum, American National Museum of all of blah 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 all of these places. Um, critics noted his soundscapes chaos and complexity, and his focus on recontextualizing rather than transforming the city sounds. Okay, so he he recorded like a sidewalk and then put it in a museum. And and wow, look and at this recontextualization. Yeah, no, he's probably good. I don't know, whatever. He's won awards and shit. So what would I know? Um, I hate anybody from. Like from our perspective, anybody that's not from America, whenever you like read about the shit they do or like where they've been from or, or whatever, it sounds like, wow, this guy's like doing some cool shit or some like shit I can never do. But it's like, well, I just don't know any of these places. Like, like he studied in Egypt. Like, whoa, he studied in Egypt. Yeah. It's like, for all I know, that's the next country over. It'd be like, you know, uh, Johnny went to, you know, Toronto. Yeah, exactly. Well, like, yeah, I mean, Nigeria, I don't, I don't know African geography very well, but no, neither Ni- do I. Nigeria, um, I know and, it's there. And Egypt are at least in the same continent. That's, yeah, that's, you know, the, that's uh, as much as I'm at, willing to at the, admit. At the very least. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it is It is like, you know, like he studied this, the cityscapes of, you know, Saskatoon or whatever. Whoa, <laughs> cool. It's like, that's the same thing. I was like, yeah, like I well, went to Indianapolis and, you know, yeah. yeah. Um, also, Just, like our country so fucking huge. That's what I was Every say. country in Africa is we need s- a, significantly smaller. We need to carve up our, our country. Or what's our, yeah, our country. Is, I forgot what the name of our thing was. How does the area of the, just the U.S. compared yeah. to the area of all of Africa? Uh, it's much. The United States is much, much smaller. Africa is huge. M- m- is it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know exactly how he... I want to say like two United States, maybe. Not counting Alaska. Okay, okay. Alaska is its own crazy fucking thing. Well, yeah. Ala- I mean, Alaska's... Do you remember when you found out how big Alaska was? It's... Do you remember how old you were? Like 28. It's, Straight up, dude. It's, yeah. It's I didn't know until... so fucking big. That's because everybody uses such whack ass yeah. uh, map projections. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, Mercator and shit. I'm all about good homolysine. <laughs> yeah, the one that looks like an orange or no? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, but it's just like, what the fuck are we doing with that thing? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. You know. And like, no one lives there, which good. Get them out of there. Right? They got no more blockbusters, so what's left? <laughs> there's nothing left for human <laughs> beings up there. It, it's, it's like unreasonable how big it is. Yeah, it truly is. Yeah. Like, wh- there's so so much big shit. Yeah. I remember when I was a kid, I was so worried about deforestation. I don't know if you ever had that problem or not, but I was... Yeah. Well, I feel like, you know, recycling and environmentalism kind of was big in the 90s and then just yeah. fell off. Yeah. Well, maybe we were like, oh, I guess we got it. I guess we're done. Yeah. I mean... Because <laughs> like, the hole in the ozone layer was so so such a big issue, it seemed. I mean, they made a... Captain Planet was a show that existed, yeah. you know? like For real. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe we just fixed that part. I don't know, dude. Maybe we've just been lied to this whole time. We did. We actually did it. Maybe we. Did, maybe we did it. Um, yeah, because I, I, I remember there being like I don't remember the exact rate, obviously, but hearing something like, you know, every every thirty five seconds a tree is cut yeah. down. Yeah. I was like, oh no, like we're gonna run, out. dude. There's so many goddamn trees. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, there's and, and that goes for everything. There's so much of everything. Well, I mean, you know, not not an infinite supply, but yeah. like, you know, we're gonna run out of gas by you know twenty fifty five or whatever. And it's like, dude, we still got another thirty years. We're fine. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah, just the world. The world is so big; and it's impossible to comprehend. Yeah. Um, which is going to be crazy when we have no trees. Like oh, all of this space with no trees. Oh, dude, we're gonna be able to put so many skate parks and yeah, <laughs> dirt bike ramps and shit. It's gonna be the best. I can't wait. Because we can just ship in air from like Mars or something at that point. Yeah. Once Mars is terraformed, we can just make a um it's a, a big, tube, like, an oxygen straw. Yeah. <laughs> wait, if there were no trees. 
let's say like right now. Oh, uh, you, you, I know you can't answer this, but let's do a thought experiment. Just like right now, like Thanos snapped his fingers and like all the trees or all the oxygen producing plant life was okay. elim- was eliminated. How long would it take for the entire world to die? <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, because there's there's oxygen, but no more is being made. Right. Well, it, I mean, okay. It's some ridiculous amount. Yeah. 60, 70% of the oxygen comes from like kelp and shit. I, like I was going to say like 90%. It it's might be stupid. It's, it's like, yeah, it's way more than you would even think. So maybe we don't even need all these goddamn well, trees. That's why I said oxygen producing plants. Yeah. What about plankton? Uh, I think plankton. Has he come up with a scheme to get rid of the plants? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I get So there's no more oxygen being yeah, produced. Yeah. Like, would it be like almost instantly? Or would it be like, fuck, we have 22 minutes? Like, you can watch one episode of a sitcom. And then you will die. Pick, choose, pick, I it, bet, pick wisely. I bet it would be like, like two days. Really, you think so? I think it would be. I That's, think it would be a while. Okay, which would be oh, so God. much worse to just be like, we got to make it count. This. Oh yeah, fuck. That'd be like that has to be a movie, right? That's like Armageddon, but for like, if you mix Armageddon with like the happening, is that what I'm thinking of? Yeah, yeah. So it's like we have two days. Yeah. I you, don't know what it was that caused this, but yeah. The, I mean, the first thing you got to do is go to a hospital because they've got some. Oh shit! Just on reserve. Yeah. Got yeah. Hospitals and scuba. Scuba. Yep. Oh my god! So it'd be like Mad Max, but for oh, oxygen. Oh shit! <laughs> this is the fucking best idea. But, but like a scuba tank is only good for an and an hour, maybe you know, like depending not, on how not big it very is. long. Right, yeah. right, right. Oh shit! Well, and at that point, it's like, okay, well, fuck it. Now I'm gonna live underwater anyway, since I need oxygen. You know, so there's going to be like whole like cities underwater. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, well, living above the water or living in the water, it's the same amount of oxygen. So, so wh- would people, people would just have to buy, you just have to buy. And they'd hide inside of lakes and shit. <sighs> can we man, can we make man-made oxygen? I mean, if we. <gasps> wow. You see what I'm saying? Like, so it, the, the best like the ultimate society, right? It, it'd be like 15 scientists who are like able to do this and then their scuba instructors <laughs> and then like four doctors and a couple of like registered nurses. Could we, I don't know if we could, can you make oxygen? It can't or, be that hard, right? Or would we figure out how to breathe something water. else? How to breathe water. Helium. Water is just where it's a little bit extra hydrogen, right? Is yes, like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, basically. Switch one of those hydrogens out for uh, oxygen. Could you do that? That's what I'm saying, dude. Because that's... Think of how much fucking water there is. What would you need? Like a laser or something? <sighs> what if you... Someone with a boil, good laser? You just boil it? Do you just boil it? <laughs> <laughs> See, the problem is you can boil it, but then you breathe in the steam and it hurts your lungs. So, yeah, you can breathe it, but it cuts your life expectancy down by like 10, 20 years. Yeah, I, I think it, it would be a laser. I think it would have to be a laser. Okay. So, like, if you had one of those good, like, green lasers, you'd probably be okay. But then if you run out of batteries, you're what fucked. What happens if you run out of water? So that's the next problem, right? It's like, all right, we solved the oxygen problem. That's whatever. <laughs> <laughs> now we're just boiling and breathing in the steam. And the, sh- the shitty thing is, like... <laughs> You need to use some of that sweet oxygen to make that water. You do, yeah. So th- you're not getting a full. It's not 100 percent efficient. So you need to you need to figure out how to synthetically make hydrogen and oxygen. Okay. So where do we go from there? How do we make fake water? Peroxide, hydrogen peroxide. And that's just, just H2O2. Okay. What so if you just we <laughs> get we get a fuckload of peroxide, and then from that we can just make water and oxygen, probably, <laughs> <laughs> and that's our problem solved right there. So we just got to find a way to produce as much hydrogen peroxide as possible. So nobody can get any cuts or scrapes or bruises. Yeah, so uh, that's perfect. Because the peroxide, all you do is take one O. Right. So right. that's 100% efficiency because you're using the water. taking one out. You're taking one out. You're mm-hmm. breathing the oxygen. And then all you're left with is water. Shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> There's no. Like, I know we're just, like, fucking around. But, like, it seems so good. <laughs> But that's all there is to it. Yeah, you just got to point a laser at your bottle of H two O two, and you're you're basically set for life. Like, what else do you need? There's this rhyme that I heard. Oh shit! I just thought of another problem. Sorry, I forgot all the plants. How are animals going to eat? All of a sudden, we've only got carnivores left, and once all the carnivores eat each other, we got no more food. I think unless 
we can increase the birth rate dramatically for all the carnivores. So that they can, half of them can eat the other half? Yeah, exactly. So we're always just above the, yeah, the birth death rate or whatever. But we would lose all the herbivores. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. we'd eat them real quick. That's all cows. That sucks. Yeah, big, yeah. Cows are. So no more burgers. Mm -mm. That's all. That's pretty much all the. All the food that All the I food eat. that we eat, yeah. Because yeah, I'm not going around eating tigers. Damn. I mean, I guess I'm going to. And then you couldn't be a vegetarian, so you would have to just you eat. You have to eat. You would meat. have to yeah. eat, like. Or, I mean, you could just, like, eat Soylent. <laughs> that's probably not. There's no way that's sustainable. No, but, yeah, you would just have to eat, like, like th cats there would and dogs be no and way shit. around it. Yeah. yeah. Man. Because, like, wild. we can for sure synthesize water and oxygen, but there's no from, way from we can. From peroxide. Right. Well, you can't just make, like, yeah, fake food. Well, they grow, they can grow meat now. Okay. So the scientists are doing double duty. They're making meat and water. And, and oxygen. Oxygen. Okay. So we just got to make sure we keep a, a few more extra scientists around. You know, this is sounding better and better because imagine how, like, sterile everything would be. You think so? There are Could no like contained environments. There are no like animals getting stuff gross. <laughs> no, yeah. no plants like dropping leaves everywhere. Right, rotting, rotting stuff. I mean, water. There would be no mud because water is too precious not to drink. There'd be no mud. <laughs> <laughs> it's a crazy thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> what, have, what have we done with all the mud parts? Did we squeeze all the mud out? No, so so like anytime, it, I don't think it would rain anymore. So you're saying with the existing mud we have is is the mud we would be left with, and then eventually they dry up. Well, no, yeah, and, and I'm saying like no new mud would be created because like when it rains, you would harvest, you would immediately uh, collect all I, I of see. the water. You would not allow it to become mud. Yes. Right, unless you want it to be mud because maybe there's an efficient way of collecting it that way. Maybe we find out how to eat mud pies. Maybe And maybe that's, yeah, what we do. Um, okay, so this is this is what this guy was doing for his art. <laughs> <laughs> Smell you later. <laughs> but there was like a there was a really funny thing that uh, Yama did when the panelist, the weird uncle. Oh panelist, yeah, yeah. Um, I can't believe I don't know his name. He he, he someone else said like I wish I could like watch that again, and he just happened to say, oh, well, it's on Netflix, so you can. <laughs> and then they were like. What? Uh, are you shilling for Netflix now? Like, yeah. And then for the rest of the episode, he just kept talking about how great Netflix yeah. was, which was such a like funny, weird thing. Yeah. I He's the one I instantly like related to the most because he was the one that was most obviously funny. Yeah. And then I love um, when like the mom and dad will yeah. sometimes do like reenactments or like, like, oh, like serious. Skits. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're so funny. <laughs> Thank you for playing Arcade Audio. Play more at arcadeaudio.net.